Well, hello, the internet. You're with Got That Funk. Uh, sometimes I see people asking in questionnaires um, or uh, YouTube surveys or whatever, uh, what's your greatest fear? Well, certainly among my greatest fears in life would be to lose my memory. Because, let me ask you this, without your memory, who are you? So much of our perceptions of ourselves depend on our memories. Uh, our entire personality is built out of constructs which are based on our responses to the things that happen to us which we store in our memories. So without your memory, your personality is uh, going to suffer as well. Now memory and personality are, as far as we know, produced by the electrochemical activity in the gray matter up here in the brain and I have recently altered my state of consciousness in a way that I had not done so in the past and it gave me an opportunity to examine my consciousness uh, in a way that I've never done so before um, now don't get me wrong I'm not saying that I think that uh, when you alter your state of consciousness that the perceptions that you have are more real than your natural perceptions in your natural state of mind. Far fucking from it. I'm saying the opposite is true. Uh, when you alter your state of consciousness, all you're really doing that makes the experience have the flavor of reality is the fact that the experiences in your mind that you're perceiving are much more intense the intensification of your perception makes it seem more real. I mean, if you think about it, uh, look into your own long-term memory right now and just ask, let's say, pick out your favorite memory from a childhood. And then I say, pick out your least favorite memory from childhood. Okay, fine. Uh, in both those cases, um, chances are the experience was unusual or intense. Um, if an experience is unusual, i.e. it's the first time something has ever happened, or if it's unusual in some other way, you're much more likely to remember it. Equally, if the experience is particularly intense, whether it's a good experience or a bad experience, if it's particularly intense, um, you're much more likely to retain it in a long-term memory. In fact, I would argue that trauma is the kind of memory which leaves such a lasting imprint that you almost can't turn away from it, at least for a while after the actual incident occurs. Uh, so it's my opinion that memory is, long-term memory anyway, is utterly dependent on the intensity of an experience or the relative value with which we place the experience to have uh, in order for us to retain it in our memory. Um, and I don't necessarily think that there's a conscious decision-making process going on there. Far from it. I think um, the brain is an amazing thing, and it chooses to store some things for seemingly no reason. I don't. And in fact, I don't say seemingly no reason. For no reason other than they had an impact on our perceptions at the time for whatever reasons. Those reasons could be psychological or whatever. Anyway... Um, what I find fascinating, I've had um, quite a few chats with people who, uh, like me, don't believe in God, but uh, do believe in spirits, or ghosts, call them what you will. And, uh, you know, I, I, I try very hard to be um, open-minded about such things. I personally don't believe in uh, a ghost in the machine. I don't think that I have spirit. I don't think there's like a, an ethereal me inside the shell or anything like that. I don't think that at all. Um, however, I, I, I never poo-poo on people who do seem to think so. I have quite a few friends who've lost loved ones and they're absolutely convinced that they have been in the presence of their deceased loved ones and it's just not my place to tell them that I think they're wrong. As far as I'm concerned, every person is entitled to their own perceptions of what the reality actually is for themselves, as long as they don't try to force that perception on other people. Um, anyway, I digress. Um,
one of the things about altering your state of consciousness is because you've intensified your perceptions, they can come across as much, much more real. But interestingly to me anyway, um, I often have taken the advantage, advantage of my altered states of consciousness to examine what my consciousness actually is. Uh, what is the process going on there? And I mean, basically, you know, you've got your five mundane senses all feeding your brain extraneous data. Uh, and it all gets sort of shuffled together like a deck of cards and uh, your brain tries to make sense out of it. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to go off on some sort of solipsistic rant or anything like that, but suffice to say that uh, an awful lot of our perceptions of reality, um, in my opinion, are based totally on our memories and our personality. Because two people can witness the same event but have a very different perception of what that event was. They will describe it differently, they'll remember it differently, even if they were standing right next to each other. And um, that kind of doesn't compute, does it? Because, well, you know, they're both there, they both saw the same thing. Why does one person think one thing about it and another person think another? You know, it's because they are different people. They carry a different set of memories with them different set of personalities with them. And make no mistake, your memories and your personality will, for sure, uh, augment your perceptions. So how much of our perceptions can we rely on? I mean, how, how do I know that I can even trust my five senses? Uh, in fact, I know that I can't. Uh, my five senses are very far from perfect. Scientifically, I know this. Intuitively, I know this, but when I'm going about my life, uh, it doesn't make sense and it's not particularly constructive to basically question everything you perceive and go, well, is it real? Is it not real? You know, that, that doesn't get you anywhere. And uh, before you know it, you'll be rocking back and forth in a padded cell with your arms tied up around your sides like that. Um, but still, I do, I do like to ponder these questions from time to time. If, if you have brain damage, uh, say you've had a stroke or you've had serious head trauma for some reason, you know, um, your memories and or your personality may suffer in various different ways. Uh, certain memories might be lost completely, certain aspects of your personality might seem diminished or altered permanently in some cases, and that's because the actual structure, the physical structure of your brain has changed. So you can make a strong argument, I think, to uh, suggest that the brain is an electrochemical organ which produces consciousness. But no matter how hard I've tried to be rational about it, when I explore my own consciousness, and whether that's with um, artificial means or whether through, through meditation, in both cases I come up with the same results. And the result for me personally is that there is a sense of consciousness which my brain produces, this idea that there's an I, a me, you know, and everything that entails with that. But I also very strongly feel that the brain perceives consciousness. That consciousness is there, everywhere, all the time. And it's very hard to put into words, but I. I can't help but feel like this electrochemical machine that I call my body um, supports and produces my, my consciousness, which is my sense of self, but also is able to perceive the universe, which kind of seems conscious to me. Because even when you take away uh, your perceptions and you stop everything, the consciousness is still there. I suppose if it wasn't, you'd be dead. So maybe that's just me being stupid. I don't really know. But um, I just thought I would sort of vent about this stuff and think about it out loud for a minute and see what you people have to say. But what do you think? Why do you think people all over the world and all throughout human history have sought to alter their state of consciousness? And uh, that's not true for every single human being in the world. But the vast majority of them, 
in one way or another, seek to alter their state of consciousness. And before you go, oh, no, 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 no. Well, let's just get something straight. Caffeine alters your state of consciousness. Nicotine alters your state of consciousness. Alcohol alters your state of consciousness. Illicit drugs alter your state of consciousness. Rigorous exercise or sex can alter your state of consciousness. There are many ways people pursue altered states. Enjoying art, music, you see what I'm saying? Whenever you seek to intensify your experience, whenever you seek to make something more than a normal average experience, whatever that means, you're seeking to alter your state of consciousness. Why do we do it? Maybe it's because memories are all we are, memories are all we have, and even though we can't take it with us, that's all we're ever going to get. It's got that fun. Thanks for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.